Welcome back to the Modeling and Wellbeing Podcast, where you can learn the ins and outs of modeling and also gain tips to better care for your holistic well being. This is a girl, Larissa, and this space is designed for us to learn, grow, and empower one another. So, Lego. Hey everybody, how y'all doing? Thank you so much for being here. I'm excited to just dive right into our topic today. Okay, if you are a beginner model, maybe you've been in the game for a little while now and you're still finding yourself struggling just a little bit when it comes to bookings and getting selected during castings and all that, Oftentimes, it's because there's something you just might be doing that might be a little off. I'm going to share seven mistakes that models typically run into um, and may just be contributing to that rejection, right? And so the list does not stop here, though. I mean, you probably even have specific instances on what hindered you from being successful or getting certain opportunities. So just know that these are just some common ones. And some of them are literally going to be so basic, (laughs) but that truly makes a difference. By the way, happy April. I mean, we are already in quarter two. So with that being said, what better timing to start off with the quarter on avoiding some of these mistakes. So let's get right into it. One of the first mistakes models typically make when they're starting out or if they're just continuing their journeys even deeper is working with cheap photographers. I say this a lot and I live by this, but quality over quantity. If you book cheap, you're probably going to get cheap results, right? And I've talked a lot about getting on a ton of shoots, right? when you're first starting out, you want to really build your portfolio. But I haven't really defined what that actually looks like and emphasize the importance of just making sure that you are just working with a ton of quality photographers if you want to really book great jobs in the future and have, again, a strong portfolio. You want to do your best to work with good photographers that are experienced for a number of reasons. However, experience is experience, right? So regardless of if you're working with a photographer that just started out or they're super experienced, those are all going to be opportunities for you to get stronger as a model and really just master the art of posing, different facial expressions, and of course, gaining knowledge of what it even looks like to, you know, work with different photographers and their styles because every photographer is definitely different. And we know that we can't always afford to be paying a lot on photo shoots for a portfolio, right? Like we're not rich yet, but again, you're going to get that practice. And when you work with photographers that are more advanced, again, it's going to be very beneficial for a number of reasons. They know specific techniques. They know what lighting should look like. They have worked more than often times with different agencies. So they really are going to give you what you need versus maybe what you want or what you think you need, right? Because they know what agents are specifically looking for. And those techniques are really going to allow you to bring out the best features that agencies are looking for as well. So this way, especially if you are just starting you're going to start in the industry on a really strong foot and agencies aren't going to really perceive you as a low quality model because of the low quality photo you may have submitted, right? And just it's just the perception of the, the human brain. When we think low quality, we think low quality, right? If we see cheap, we associate that with cheap. Now, mind you, depending on the type of modeling you're going for, right? A lot of um, agencies 
aren't always going to need those really professional photos. Some of them might want digital photos, right? Uh, that's super, very, super simple, y'all. It's literally you're wearing all black, your hair is pulled back, you don't really have any makeup on, and you're just taking a picture with your iPhone or something or whatnot, or, and maybe you are using a photographer, but it doesn't have to be anything extra special with like photo retouching or anything like that. Uh, it's like a mugshot almost, like you just stand straight on to the camera, you go maybe a little angle or directly on the side to see your profile and then do that kind of both sides. But you will want to do your best to get higher quality photos for things like your headshot, maybe a half body shot, especially for actors, you, you're going to need a really good headshot. Again, if you don't know what a headshot is, that's going to be like just a shot of your face. <laughs> um, and it's typically going to be shoulder up or maybe waist up, just depending on the photographer's style. That's essentially going to be your business card and what your agencies are going to with other photographers. And when I say cheap, I'm specifically talking about the experience. Um, usually if a, a photographer is just starting, they may not be as high as quality as someone that's been in the game for a little longer. So I know cheap can be a pretty harsh word, <laughs> but um, I just really want you to know um, what that entails and the difference uh, between that and a more professional photographer or higher quality photographer. The second mistake that models run into are is applying to wrong agencies this is gonna go back to you have to know your model type when you know the type of model that you are that's going to drive what kind of agent you need to apply for now if you don't know the model types i know i've talked about that in a, a past episode but let me just recap a few of the most common ones there is commercial modeling, so that's going to be an individual that portrays the everyday type of person, typically going to be more smiley and into different campaigns like Target, for example, high fashion, very, very cookie cutter on sizes. So women are typically between zero to four in size and for height starts at five, nine and up. Curvy women more often now are going to be considered as high fashion and maybe plus size women as well, depending on the designer or the show. Men are typically going to be a little bit more lean and then the height starts at like 5'11 and up. Then you have the tween modeling. So this is a person that's gonna portray as a teen figure. Think of like 17 magazine. Editorial modeling, very similar to high fashion, but it's really more artsy. It's a little bit more creative and inclusive to different heights. One thing I will say about editorial is you will see a lot of models that have really unique facial features, maybe really sharp bone structures. Editorial can have, again, that artistic touch and maybe even be a bit grungy and weird, which is actually pretty cool. You have fit modeling very straightforward the models are going to be pretty fit <laughs> and then lingerie and swimwear typically you have to be more on the fit side or help your side uh, for your body and you want to be very very super confident with your body when you're modeling that lingerie and swimwear because honestly you know it could be a little skimpy with the fabric you know <laughs> So those are just some types of modeling examples and more popular ones that people can get into. So I really want you to think about what kind of model you are. I am not going to fit into all of these. I could do all of them, right? But I want to narrow down what this is for me so I can have a more focused approach when it comes to applying for agents. Right. And I want you to think about this when it comes to your height, your size, your face and your overall health. Right. Is your face more sharp and edgy? Does it give like little women vibes and you're actually 29, but you look 23? <laughs> Everyone thinks that I'm like 22, but I'm 29. 
right? And do you have a, a bright smile? Do you have big teeth? Do you have white teeth? Do you, you know, so just really think about what your facial features look like in your, your, your energy. What does it gravitate? What kind of compliments do you get to help you choose the right agencies? So this is all up to you to figure out, right? And when you figure that out, that's going to increase your chances of getting selected with agents because you are applying to the right agents. So do your best to to look for mother agents that are going to place you in a lot of different jobs outside of what's happening in your direct city. I talked about model types and agents in a few of my other former episodes, so make sure you check that out as well. The third mistake is taking that rejection personally. Now, for me, I talk a lot about rejection throughout a lot of the episodes, but at the end of the day, rejection is real. I mean, don't we hate it? Like, we hate being told no. (laughs) But sometimes that no could be the best no that you could ever get because it's really not rejection, it's a redirection. One thing I will say too is just a reminder that rejection is a part of the business. A lot of times when you're told no, it probably, like literally, I'm saying you live to really, y'all. It doesn't have anything to do with you. There's a lot of factors that go into being selected as a model from your look to what they are, they are not looking for, to the shade of your skin, to the market in general, right? There's so many things that goes into it to like, oh, wait, shoot, you guys, we actually don't need this for this project. I mean, I'm pretty sure even Beyonce has gotten rejected so many times before she, to this day, broke that Grammy record. And we don't hear about those rejection stories. We don't know about them. One, probably because we don't know her personally, right? But those things aren't quite, they're just not as known compared to the success stories. And I know a lot of model and talent have those different stories too before they got their big break or they got um, a really cool gig. So literally almost every episode, you know, I'm, I'm gonna talk about the fact that you shouldn't give up, right? Because rejection is a part of the process. And if you can't take rejection, then maybe this industry isn't for you. Because at the end of the day, sometimes that stuff really gets us down and it hurts. And I remember crying about being rejected even recently when I didn't get into a show. I was so upset, but honestly, like it was the best thing that happened to me because I know that my priorities right now as an individual was beyond that show, you know? And I understand that that was not in alignment for me, but I'm not gonna let that get me down, right? We, I don't want you to drive crazy. <laughs> I really want you to, to get back up and say like, well, I'm gonna get the one next time. And if I don't, I'm gonna get the one next time after that, right? So again, don't give up, I'm rooting for you. Woo, woo. That's me clapping, <laughs> don't give up. With that being said, this goes into the mistake of number four. A lot of models give up too soon. You don't want to make this. There's always ways that you can get stronger in the model industry or talent industry. Just like there are always ways that you can get stronger as a person. I mean, if we were all born out the womb (laughs) and we were perfect and we knew everything, what is the purpose of life? When you get rejected from agents or specific jobs, know that again, it's a part of the business, but don't let it discourage you from stopping this passion of yours, right? Like it's a passion. So sometimes passions are gonna be associated with persistence, it's gonna be associate, associated with getting back up. Many, many opportunities are, are coming. And like I said, the reason why models give up too soon is because there's something that they really need to work on. There's a few things that you should keep in mind. Is it your body? Maybe you really need to work on your health and wellness, uh, your facial expressions in a photo. Maybe you actually look a little bit more awkward than you actually think you do. Practice facial expressions. Maybe it's your model walk or your professionalism. How you show up on set is being perceived differently than what you feel like really figure out what you need to do to improve so that you can 
increase your chances to thrive. The fifth reason or mistake that models make are signing bad contracts. I will never forget the specific America's Next Top Model episode when Tyra tests the models and she had them go to an opportunity and they were all asked to sign a contract before starting the job. Well, of course, no brainer. None of them read the contract that they signed. And so they ended up being asked to do something along the lines of nudity for an opportunity. And a lot of them were very uncomfortable with it and were almost like, no, I'm not doing that. And so she said, well, I mean, you guys signed the contract. (laughs) That specific episode always stuck with me and just emphasized the importance that we need to be reading the fine print, y'all. You never know what's there. Yes, it's so exciting, right? When you finally get accepted into something that you feel is good for you and going to make you millions or hundreds of dollars. We also know that humans are human and people are going to test us. They're going to try us. They're going to see like, ooh, maybe they're going to fall for my trap. Whether it's something along the lines of nudity or taking extra money from your paycheck than what should be happening, you always want to make sure that you're reading the fine print so that you know what that partnership will look like between you and the agent or the opportunity. One quick tip for you, never sign a contract on the spot. Always make sure that you are telling them specifically that you're going to get back to them between three to five business days, which is typically the professional time or turnaround time that you should be allotted. Don't return the contract until you've read it thoroughly. Uh, When someone wants you to sign something on the spot, that's usually a big red flag. Like, why are you rushing me, right? Like, what is it that you are hiding? And take your time. I mean, you can consult with anyone between lawyers, attorneys, parents, friends, maybe other models to just make sure that you are understanding the contract correctly and you're not getting yourself into any trouble. A couple of red flags that you might want to notice on the contract is first the commission rate. If you don't already know, typically an agent will only deduct between 10 to 20% commission from your job. Anything higher than that is a red flag. And number two, if your exclusive contract with the mother agent is more than one year, that's technically a red flag because mother agents typically sign their models for a minimum of one year unless there's some exception right so just be aware of that and if if it is more than one year you need to ask why that is and of course if you're asked to do something or agree to any form of uh, consensual physical exchanges in order for a job definitely a red flag the sixth mistake is wearing too much makeup to castings or having too many unnatural things on you (laughs) (laughs) I've talked about this and the importance of how you should actually show up when you're going to castings or auditions in a couple of episodes. So make sure that you take a look at those, but I will recap this. The point of modeling is to show your natural, beautiful features. Agencies and casting directors want to see the real you. They want to see what they can work with. They can't see what they can work with. If you're coming up with some heavy filled eyebrows and I don't know, long acrylic nails. From your hair to the amount of makeup that you want in your nails, you should always be thinking, hey, how can it be as natural as possible with this opportunity? Especially with the makeup, you literally want to just have little to no makeup, maybe a little bit of foundation, a little bit of mascara, and just titching up the eyebrows a little bit um, to make you um, just glow a little bit. But you don't want to be looking glammed up, right? We, you know, again, we want to look as natural as possible. If you do have acrylic nails, I mean, by any means, it's kind of okay nowadays. You just want to make sure that they're really short so they can almost look pretty natural uh, with the nude pink color or French tips that you can get away with. But overall, you want to try to get into a habit of unnatural nails as much as possible. And last but not least, the seventh mistake is 
people not getting dressed appropriately for the casting. I also see this with a lot of experienced models. They just get too comfortable in the industry. They see other models doing it, not being addressed appropriately and say like, oh, well, I mean, I've been doing this for a while, like whatever. Well, that whatever might cost you, right? Because we want, again, for you to just look as professional as possible. You want to make sure that you have the appropriate attire for your castings and auditions. I also made the mistake of this. And fortunately, I got into the agent. I was so surprised, <laughs> but definitely don't learn from me when it, don't follow me when it comes to that. You want to increase your chances as much as possible for of getting that job. So they want to make sure the reason why, right? You want to wear all black and all that stuff, or maybe form fitting clothes, or some people wear white t-shirts that's form fitting. The point is to show off your figure. They want to see your everything, right? That's modeling. You're modeling your body. So you want to show off your long limbs. You want to show off your physique. You don't want to wear anything too baggy. I also learned that a skirt is actually pretty beneficial for, especially for women, because they want to see how big your legs are to fit you, right? Typically you want to bring heels, right? Um, I would say it's okay to wear boot heels, boot high heels are fine. And you want to uh, just be in your P's and Q's, right? I don't think I need to go on more about this one, but know exactly what you need to get the job done and be professional, regardless of who you're working with, regardless if it's a charity audition or something, you want to be professional um, because it, it definitely does go a long way. Right, you want it. You want a good wrap, yes. Well, I sure do hope that this was all helpful for you. And I would also love to hear what other tips do you have? What other mistakes have you personally run into? Look, we are a family here. I am always open to sharing my mistakes with you. Feel free to ask. We all do it. It happens. We're human. As long as we're learning from them right? We want to just make sure that we are being on our P's and Q's again, moving forward, even if we made the mistake. So whether you're starting modeling or you're currently in the game for years and years, I believe that we can always learn from someone's perspective, regardless of how many times you've heard something. Things are always a good reminder. So let's just share things with one another. But again, I hope this was helpful. I hope that you do your best to avoid these mistakes. And I'm just excited to keep learning and growing with all of you. Uh, with that being said, we are going to get into our affirmations as we wrap our episode. At the end of each episode, we recite affirmations together. Affirmations are designed to help you become aware of your personal strengths and values. When you are able to note your strengths, it can be a game changer for improving your self-awareness and building confidence. Repeat after me. I will slay at every audition. My body is healthy and happy. I am relentless. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. I'm so excited to stay connected with you. I've been getting like a lot of cool requests, things from, hey, you should make an episode about pageants to, hey, can you talk about posing tips? So know that more is coming, but season two is actually wrapping up pretty soon in a few episodes, which I'm so sad about, but I'm so excited. So Let's just stay connected. Follow me on Instagram or TikTok as at Rissa Snugs, R-I-S-A-S-N-U-G-G-S. -S -S. I'm also on YouTube. Links are in the bio of this episode section, section of the episode. <laughs> I'm sending peace and love your way today. Thank you so much. XOXO and see you next time. Bye.